Mmm. This is a tasty burger. There's a war going on, and it's all about hamburgers. The smoking gun? Many different burgers are battling it out to global domination. McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, Five Guys, and A&W are just a few of the combatants involved in the burger wars, and they don't seem to be backing down anytime soon. What a burger sounds like a new kid on the block, but is it really? Time to find out. So let's take a look at the top 10 untold truths about what a burger. Look at this sorry, miserable, squashed thing. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture? What a burger is Texas's best kept secret. Sorry, it's strictly confidential. Whataburger was proclaimed a state treasure. You see, Whataburger was born in Texas on August 8, 1950, and that makes the unique burger factory 68 years old to date and fast approaching the grand old dame status. As an iconic brand, Texans hold a deep adulation for their homegrown burger joint. So when in Texas, do as the Texans do. Do not insult their favorite burger in any way if you plan on staying out of trouble. In fact, Whataburger Field is the home of the Corpus Christi Hooks. Immediately, you pick up that great aroma of Whataburger. I'm confident that once you taste Whataburger, you can never hurt the feelings of the average Texan. Odes to Whataburger have been composed by famous artists, and Nike shoes have been designed with the classic Whataburger logo in mind. Further, an increasing number of sweethearts who met and fell in love inside a Whataburger establishment are either choosing to get married in the restaurant or renewing their marriage vows there. Playing at Whataburger Field makes you feel at home because Whataburger's Texas. Feeling the Whataburger love? Well, take a second to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad. Open for you 24 hours a day. Whataburger, not McDonald's, invented the quarter pounder. Yes! Look what I have created! Take it from Moreno, the burger sleuth who claims that since 1950, Whataburger has been using quarter pound beef patties ahead of Mickey D's, which, by the way, only caught on with the craze in 1971, according to Javier Moreno at BuzzFeed. Oh, the Johnny come lately. So stop giving McDonald's more credit than it deserves. In fact, even in an actual taste test, the Big Mac has lost the game. According to Elizabeth Abrahamson of Wide Open Country, Whataburger won the battle fair and square in an arm wrestling of sorts, sponsored by Fast Company. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Whataburger is hands down the best tasting burger in the US of A without a doubt. And that's why it's called Whataburger. I mean, everybody I know in Texas likes Whataburger. Spoiler alert, you'll need both hands to tackle a Whataburger. Okay, now. Dig in. One of the things making the Whataburger unique is that the bun alone is already five inches thick. So what say you, huh, Big Mac? The infamous McDonald's concoction has been fabricated to make eating it impossible without making a mess. What with all the lettuce, onions, mayo, and patty bits spilling out. Also, did you notice that the sheer size of McDonald's flagship product has been shrinking with the passing of years? This hasn't happened to Whataburger. It's still as big as it used to be. However, nothing can stop you from ordering ordering just a burger if you want to downsize at the burger joint, which as of April 2018 has 824 branches spread across the USA. You can even try What a Catch, the company's take on the fish sandwich, and while doing so, try comparing it with the filet of fish. Also, feel free to compare and contrast the What a Chicken with the Mick Chicken. Oh, the dinosaurs feared the T-Rex. What a Burger locales are masters at customization. How the hell do you know that? Because I'm a genius. It is said that there are over 36,000 possible combinations to customize the Whataburger. Now, try doing that with the Big Mac. The company has also managed to cement itself into the average Texan heart by making its own ketchup, mayo, mustard, and other condiments. Can't get enough of these condiments? You can also buy them at HEB grocery stores that are found all over the state. Planning to bring a taste or a souvenir of Whataburger home? The burger craftsmen of the Lone Star State just won't be beaten when it comes to merchandising. To illustrate, you can order a ketchup gift pack, complete with a t-shirt, mouse pad, reusable bag, and of course, the ketchup itself, whether spicy, fancy, or original. Take your pick. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Two heads are better than one, a Whataburger story. Just stick to the story. 
Into every life, some rain must fall. Whataburger is the brainchild of Harmon Dobson and Paul Burton, whose partnership would prove to be pretty short-lived. I guess two extremely creative dudes just couldn't live forever under one roof, so to speak. In less than a year after the two opened shop in breezy Corpus Christi, Dobson decided to raise the price of Whataburger from 25 to 30 cents a piece. Just consider that at the time that a McDonald's burger only cost 15 cents. If you put yourself in the shoes of Burton, you'll be throwing tantrums at your business partner's decision, too. In fairness, however, the drastic price increase mirrors Dobson's supreme confidence in their flagship product. You can further contextualize such a brave, if not rash, decision when you know for a fact that at that point in time, McDonald's had already been in business for 10 years. That's definitely one David trying to challenge an established Goliath. For all of Dobson's fire in the belly, he would perish in a plane crash on April 11, 1967. His burger enterprise, however, would live on as a testament to the Texan business entrepreneurship that's far removed from J.R. Ewing of Dallas fame. In fact, Dobson would pass away not even knowing that there's another burger company in the U.S. called What a Burger, and he thought his idea was original. In 1970, What a Burger and What a Burger started suing each other over copyright infringement, and when the dust cleared, the burger company that Dobson built would emerge as the winner. However, What a Burger was still allowed by law to continue to operate as a burger joint in the state of Virginia and the two Carolinas. The final verdict was that although Whataburger held an unassailable copyright, the operation of Whataburger in its markets was virtually harmless to the burger chain that Dobson built in Texas. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. How the great Whataburger tragedy unfolds. <sighs> I gotta prove it. Prove what? While it all looks like an episode from the hit television series Dallas, which, of course, wouldn't come to the average Texan consciousness until later in 1978, the Whataburger story would have quite a different soap opera. The extremely photogenic Lynn Dobson would take the reins for the burgeoning Texas burger chain with all the trappings of a real cowgirl. However, the Whataburger matriarch would prove to be tougher than TV's Miss Ellie. In fact, Mrs. Dobson seemed to rule with an iron hand as she managed to keep the whole Whataburger enterprise a private business completely oblivious to the growing trend of going public. Was she inspired by Alexis Carrington Colby? Later, she would hand over the reins of the Whataburger business to her son, Hugh, who in turn would rescue the company from becoming a sinking ship well into the 90s. Hugh's secret? As Tom Peters would have it in his now famous management book, In Search of Excellence, successful companies who stick to the knitting get blessed in turn with longevity and financial success. The same can be said for Whataburger, which nearly perished from the escalating competition had Hugh not decided to return to what his father's company does best, the hamburger business. Well, nobody's perfect. A secret menu as secret as the Star Wars Death Star. If you only knew the power of the dark side. After doing his own version of Return of the Jedi, the son who has successfully taken over the family business from his doting mom could only be blessed with a secret menu that knows how to attract, if not cement, a loyal following in Texas and beyond. The Whataburger secret menu isn't a hamburger, unless, of course, you consider a chicken burger a hamburger. Hence, a definition is in order. In the strictest sense, a hamburger must have a beef and not a chicken patty, although such a distinction could be fading at the rate that the burger warriors are innovating on their various offerings to the public. So we did some sleuthing, and lo and behold, we found out Whataburger's biggest secret of all. That the best of the best in the Whataburger menu isn't really the Whataburger per se. Instead, it's this innocent looking chicken sandwich that's unceremoniously enclosed in toasted sliced bread. Inside, you'll find chicken strips held together by a rather spiderweb-like cheese. Just make sure you ask the Whataburger crew to put honey butter instead of honey mustard on the chicken. Go ahead and order it, but let's keep it on the down low, okay? Part of the Whataburger secret menu is Hulk, an odd drink consisting of a Powerade and Vault Soda combo. The big mystery is that we don't know for sure if the Hulk in the equation is Hulk Hogan, the infamous wrestler, or the Incredible Hulk, keeping the mystery alive and well. The bottom line with secret menus is that the plot thickens, unless you actually try to ask the Whataburger crew what they're up to in a hush-hush fashion inside the Whataburger restaurant or the drive-thru. So, you have accepted the truth. A company logo as mysterious as ancient aliens. I think that it would be the most revolutionary story in the history of mankind. 
If you're an avid fan of the History Channel's hit series Ancient Aliens, you will probably find the Whataburger logo very intriguing. It consists of flowing lines of orange that forms the impression of the big letter A. The Avengers would have picked this logo for themselves had the original Whataburger not been wise enough to patent it. As it sits right now, it's water under the bridge for our favorite bunch of Marvel superheroes. Long live the Whataburger symbol that has withstood the test of time. It's definitely the founder's tribute to the art of flight. What with the symbol's flowing lines that seem ready to disappear in mid-air at any time. In fact, from afar, the Whataburger logo seems to warp into the letter W, definitely making it more creative than the original handwritten Coca-Cola logo. Coke hasn't thought yet of designing a head office that's shaped like the legendary Coca-Cola body, Marilyn Monroe style. But from the very beginning, Dobson has seen it fit to let his spirit live on in his company by entrenching his undying love for aviation. In fact, the very first incarnation of the old man's idea found itself in the very first Whataburger joints, sporting that air plane or airplane hangar look. Lucky for him, the aviation industry hasn't caught up with adopting the flightful symbol for a commercial airline carrier. In the era of drive through circa 2000 to be exact, the classic Whataburger logo would be reborn into a well-integrated A symbol at the center of a largely box-shaped fast food compound. Symbols are a language that can help us understand our past. The Whataburger in Frisco, Texas was among the first to get upgraded to the new look. When you upgrade it from room service, it's quite serious. Any talk about Whataburger complexes inevitably brings us to the colossal Whataburger by the Bay Structure in Corpus Christi. At 6,000 square feet, the chain has every right to housing the life-size bronze statue of the Whataburger founding father, who, like Indiana Jones, seems to always try cheating death. The rambunctious character either shames or shades Colonel Sanders of KFC fame. In his otherwise short lifespan, the legendary Dobson had been a roughneck, a diamond courier, and a pilot who would have loved to fly the Millennium Falcon. The windmills of Whataburger's quixotic existence and stance was Hurricane Ike, which literally forced the company to move its headquarters from the bay-positioned Corpus Christi headquarter to San Antonio, Texas. Hence, by the stroke of a decade after the second millennium, the Whataburger HQ was already well entrenched in a less windy and definitely less hurricane-prone Texan city that's known as the fastest growing of the top 10 largest USA cities from 2000 to 2010. That San Antonio made the the mark is a testament to the fiery determination of the Whataburger enterprise to win the ever-intensifying burger wars of America. Whataburger is definitely no stranger to rapid growth right from the get-go. Just picture this. At less than 10 years old, the business that Burger built was able to establish a beachhead in Florida. A year later, and Whataburger franchises had spread like wildfire to Tennessee. A decade more, and the company would amass more than 100 stores. By 2007, there were already 700 Whataburger establishments spread across 10 U.S. states. What I've learned from men like my father and Harry is that you reap what you sow. Whataburger, the private company that can. Everybody wants this. Everybody wants to be us. While nearly every successful company inevitably opens itself up to the public as a publicly traded corporation sooner or later, Whataburger has had both the will and the power to stay on as a family-owned enterprise. To illustrate, the Dobson family still owns at least 611 of the 824 Whataburgers in existence. The rest of the ownership is distributed among 25 franchisees. Amid this scenario, the Dobsons obviously still hold the majority stake in the business. It's not like they're going to hand over the reins of their beloved enterprise that still has so much untapped potential, and the raging burger wars can only get bigger. If the preeminent burger family continues to play its cards well, there is a chance to beat McDonald's at its game in terms of taste alone. The hamburger is one of America's greatest inventions. It's the fast food that takes minutes to prepare and, not surprisingly, the first choice of working men and soccer moms alike. In our ups and downs, we're a family. Now that you know all this about Whataburger, find out about how to become an official Babble Topper. Just click the join link in the description below. And for more great videos, stay right here. Just point and click.